Disneyland is your land. <laughs> Come seek an adventure at the old pirates, eh? Make the jump to light speed. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Oh, yeah! Welcome to the Disneyland Beat, where our toes tap to a Disneyland drum. And we whistle while we work. Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm TC. When you visit Disneyland today, you're going to hear a lot of original music. Music written specifically for the films many of the rides are based on. Music written to be background, acting as a soundtrack to your day, supporting the theming of the different lands. There has been a lot of Disneyland Park-specific music composed for various shows like Fantasmic, World of Color, the Main Street Electrical Parade, and, of course, the Fireworks Spectaculars. And there is music composed or arranged specifically for the attractions to support the cues and the ride itself. Today we're going to focus on the song songs found in Disneyland today and pay special attention to the songs written exclusively for rides and attractions. Today we're going to start with the Matterhorn bobsleds. You might think there's no music on that ride, just howling wind. But did you know that this 1959 attraction has original polka music in the queue for you to listen to? In 1958, Disneyland had a resident yodeler and polka expert, Fred Burry, who put out an album and many of the songs from the 18-minute Matterhorn queue loop were chosen from it. Fred Burry yodeling with Willie Begston and his Matterhorn musicians. Although the album was put out by another company, Disney obtained the rights and Fred Burry's song, I'm Huhi Hashli, became the first iconic song of the Matterhorn Mountain at Disneyland, perhaps the world even. There are other Fred Burry compositions and classic German folk songs, and that highlights something that Disney often does. They combine original music, written specifically for an attraction, with well-known music, classics from different cultures. The pre-show list is much the same today as it has been over the years at the Matterhorn. Of course, most of the Disneyland rides use music from the film they're based upon or license existing music. Snow White's Enchanted Wish, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, Pinocchio's Daring Journey, Peter Pan's Flight, Alice in Wonderland, and the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh all use music written for the films throughout the rides. This also includes the Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage, Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters, the Mark Twain Riverboat, Casey Jr.'s Circus Train, the Mad Tea Party, Dumbo, the Disneyland Railroad, and the King Arthur Carousel. Plus Splash Mountain, and we have to assume the upcoming Tiana's Bayou Adventure. But most of the time, it does take specific arrangements and orchestration of that music in order to make it work for a ride. Much like a video game, many of the rides do not time out exactly the same for every rider every time, and there needs to be some flexibility in the music to accommodate for that. Many attractions use music loops specific to a certain area or room of the ride, while others have the ability to vamp indefinitely if a ride vehicle gets delayed. But the point is that it's rarely as simple as grabbing some music tracks from the film soundtrack, and even if it is familiar music, it will often be re-recorded to fit the requirements of the ride. We think one of the first Disneyland attractions to have original music written specifically for it, for the actual main attraction and not just the queue, is Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, which opened in 1962. This massive exhibition of Walt Disney's new at the time audio animatronics has about 150 birds, each with individually recorded musical tracks. Most of the songs included in the short show are existing tunes. Let's All Sing Like the Birdies Sing and Hawaiian War Chant are pre-existing songs. But famed Disney composers Robert and Richard Sherman were engaged to write an original song, and they came up with In the Tiki 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 Room, a much beloved song still in use today. A few years later, in 1964, the Sherman brothers were asked to work on the It's a Small World project for the World's Fair, a ride that would eventually open at Disneyland in 1966, It's a Small World. You know the song, we all know the song. It has practically become the definition of the word earworm in modern society. But still, it's a wonderful song with a great message. The idea for the ride was a boat trip visiting the children of the world with a message of inclusivity and peace. The Sherman Brothers came up with the song Children of the World, now known as It's a Small World. It had a simple melody and could easily be translated into many different languages. In fact, originally it was recorded in different languages that would play in the different rooms of the ride. But audio options at the time were unable to keep the sound isolated. So the languages would speak over each other, creating a bit of a cacophony. So 
so it was decided to be kept in the same language yet still highlight different voices and instrumentation in the different rooms. The ride pioneered the idea of synchronizing different sounds and songs in different rooms and scenes into one cohesive experience. It is still an impressive experience. Musically, it builds upon itself like Ravel's Bolero to a delightful conclusion. Just a few years later, a Disneyland Imagineer began to compose the words for one of the most famous attraction songs of all time. Atencio wrote the script for the classic Disneyland attraction Pirates of the Caribbean together with George Bruins, the animation studio's director at the time and an Academy Award winner with film scores to his credit like Babes in Toyland, Sleeping Beauty, 101 Dalmatians, and The Absent-Minded Professor. Yo-Ho, A Pirate's Life for Me is a song that is heard in many different forms throughout the ride. It's sung by Ghost, it's used in orchestral themes, and eventually sung in full by several different pirates at the sacked and burning town of Puerto Dorado. Many parts of the song were recorded by the Mellow Men, the popular singing group founded by Disney legend Thurl Ravenscroft. Of course, the songs have gone on to be performed by park musical acts like the Bootstrappers, be part of the musical themes of the modern film franchise, and it is probably one of the most recognizable melodies in the world. New Orleans Square's companion attraction, the Haunted Mansion, which opened in 1969, used much of the same team to compose Grim Grinning Ghosts or the Screaming Song, the main song and theme of the ride. Borrowing the title from Shakespeare, Imagineer Exitensio also penned the lyrics for this famous song. However, Buddy Baker was employed to compose the melody for the famous song, which is played in many different styles as you wander the haunted halls. Of course, once you eventually make your way outside to the graveyard, you hear Exitensio's lyrics sung by the ghosts themselves. The song has gone on to be included in every version of the ride, sung by many park musical groups and included in the film version, including the upcoming one. Haunted Mansion had been in the planning stages for many years, but in the interim, Disneyland opened its new Tomorrowland in 1967, our favorite version of the land to ever exist. It included original music for the attraction Adventures Through Inner Space as well as the People Mover attraction. In fact, today you can still hear one of the songs written for the People Mover in the Autopia queue. Often, songs live on in Disney and find new life. Over the years, many older attractions have gone, but their songs still live on. Bygone attractions such as the Country Bears Jamboree, the Carousel of Progress, and America Sings have original music, and much of it is still heard today in the soundtracks of the various lands or for special events. The roller coaster Space Mountain opened without music, but when the ride was upgraded in 1994 to have speakers inside the ride vehicles, it got its first soundtrack. In 1996, composer Aaron Richard and show producer Eddie Soto teamed up to create an onboard music track. The creative vision was to fuse two iconic musical forms of the 1960s, sci-fi horror music and surf music, into a sensory ride experience. All of the music written for the 1996 version was based on the Carnival of the Animals, Aquarium, written by Camille Saint-Saëns. Guitarist Dick Dale was brought into Disney Imagineering Recording Studio to play an awesome surf rock version of the melody for the downhill portion of the ride. In 2005, the Dick Dale soundtrack was replaced by an original composition by composer Michael Giacchino of Pixar film fame that is synchronized to the track. Like the former soundtrack, the opening portion has a sci-fi sound with theremin influences throughout the ascent, switching to a beat-driven score during the high-speed sections of the attraction. Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin, which was added in 1996, has a very specific and zany soundtrack, but it's based on Franz Liszt's Hungarian Rhapsody. It was orchestrated and arranged by George Wilkins, who has worked on many Disneyland compositions. His music used to be heard in the Space Mountain queue, at the Country Bears Vacation Hoedown and Holiday Overlay, and he orchestrated Randy Newman songs for Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters, among others. He went on to create the soundtracks for Epcot's Test Track and the infamous Superstar Limo, among others. Galaxy's Edge is the only land to not have any music in its outdoor areas. As you wander around, you are, however, surrounded by an immersive soundscape of an alien planet. You hear its insects and animals, its inhabitants, and many many spaceships taking off and landing. While it doesn't have any music in the land, original music was composed for its rides. In fact, Star Wars legend John Williams himself composed music that is used on both of the attractions. Rise of the Resistance and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run used the Grammy-nominated new music by John Williams to score the rides. He even conducted much of the recording sessions himself. 
It's in the theme of Star Wars music, of course, but it's exciting and it's original. Of course, Star Tours has always required a flexible arrangement of John Williams' melodies to facilitate its many versions and destinations. And we are so glad the tradition continues today. Disneyland's most recent rideable attraction, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, has an original song composed by Christopher Willis as well as original music throughout. The song is called Nothing Can Stop Us Now. The song sets the tone for the ride and is heard throughout, though the music goes in many different directions as the Runaway Railway goes through the Old West, a carnival, and even underwater. Christopher Willis is the composer of all of the Mickey Mouse cartoon series, as well as a couple other series, including Veep and the current musical hit series, Schmigadoon. We certainly hope Disneyland continues to include original dedicated compositions in its attractions. Having something you only hear while at the park is very special. Well, folks, that's it for us today. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to follow this up with a future video focusing on the original music used in the park's lands and musical groups. May the light in the firehouse window always shine brightly. And may your dreams always come true. See you real soon, Mouseketeers. Bye, Gummy, you talk. Chicken! I am not chicken! I will not!